we'll briefly explain some of the terms you might come across when buying a log cabin, such as log thickness, construction features and materials. Log cabins come in a range of shapes and sizes and are a really cost effective way of giving you some extra living space. When you're deciding on which cabin to buy, you'll need to think about what you want it to be used for. Is it a home office, summer house or a kid's playroom? As this will probably affect your final decision. The logs used in the construction of these buildings are precision cut to form a six-sided profile which slots together as the cabin is built up. The shape of the joint creates a really tight fit, doesn't need any fixings and gives a maximum resilience against the UK's wind and rain. The logs are also kiln dried, a process which extracts the moisture from the timber and reduces the risk of splitting and warping. You must remember that timber is a natural material and even though all the timber has been kiln dried, any changes in the moisture content due to the weather may still create some movement. The timber that's used should always be slow grown and from a sustainable source. You can tell if it's slow grown if you can see very tight growth rings at the edge of the logs. Look out for the FSC symbol which guarantees that it's from a well managed and sustainable forest. Log cabins are available in various wall or log thicknesses from 28 mm, 34 mm or 44 mm. A cabin built with thicker logs will be more robust and better insulated and is more likely to be double glazed making it ideal as a home office. Windows in log cabins are glazed with standard 4mm glass and will either be single or double glazed. You can tell this by looking into the corners of the windows. If you can see a metal strip between two panes then it's double glazed. Log cabin windows often have a tilt and turn mechanism allowing you to open the windows in a couple of different ways. Window or glazing bars are purely decorative and don't offer any specific function. So if you'd rather have an uninterrupted view out of the window, then just gently ease them off when you're building your cabin. The roof and floors of cabins should be built from kiln dried tongue and groove boards. As the name suggests, the boards lock together and when fixed give a smooth watertight finish. The thickness of the boards will vary. Roof boards should be 19 mm thick, but floor thickness will vary depending on the cabin in question. Underneath the floor, there will be floor bearers or joists, which are pressure treated timber beams that run the full length of the log cabin. They support the base of the building, but also raise it off the floor and protect it from groundwater and damp. Although the tongue and groove roof is watertight, there is always the risk that the slightest movement in the timber may let water in. So the roof should always be covered with either roofing felt or felt shingles. Roofing felt will do the job, but felt shingles are thicker and create a more attractive roof covering. Felt shingles take longer to install as they're strips of felt shaped to give the appearance of individual tiles. The weight of the roof will be supported with sturdy beams or purlins, which will run the full length of the building. These are always visible in log cabins. These purlins, together with the exposed interlocking corners, are what give log cabins their distinctive look. Finally, log cabins are supplied in raw, untreated timber, but should always be treated with a preservative within two weeks of being built. There are lots of natural timber colour treatments available, but a great way to finish a cabin would be to paint it with a high quality paint coating.